what we are going to do today is to continue with the life cycle aspects that we started last week and to finish with the life cycle aspects we started last week. And then we will do, as always, an exercise to put in practice these things. And for the exercise, we will use the um, projects that are already on GitHub, that are essentially the follow-up of last week's exercise, the same client in React, and the server has just a few APIs implemented. So the, the original server had a GET API and a, a PUT API, the one that we developed in class. Now it also has a DELETE and a POST API. Something that you should also have already done in the lab a few weeks ago. So nothing really complicated from that perspective. But we need that to implement, to add to our exam uh, app the possibility to delete and to add an exam. So we need the API to do that. So last time we spoke about use effect and we have seen use effect for getting information from a server as a possible way, as a possible usage of use effect, the, the fetching data, getting information from a server. And Let's look at this example hmm, here in the slides. Uh, what does it, what does this exercise does to you? <coughs> there is anything strange that you see here or not? This is up, this is a server. This is the server and this is the React application, the entire, let's say, React application. What happens here? Anyone? It's, it's morning, but it's time to wake up. Um, so what does the server, what does the server does? Yes. Yes, in a little bit more details, the server. It's correct. What, what does the server, yes, the server flips a text in that way, as in picture, the text that they receive, not as a parameter, but as a, as a request. If we, are, if we are in the server, here we have, what is this? Yes, the API, and specifically a GET. And so it doesn't receive a parameter. It's a receive, yes, a receive a request that is the object representing the HTTP request, and then extract the text from the query in the parameter and flip it in that way, so as in a mirror. And then return a JSON file with um, just text column and the actual test flipped. And then start the server. And this is the server, one API. What does the React application? How many components do we have here? One. And in particular, this component is made of Look at the picture. At was made the component. What is the JSX of the component? Do 
there is an input element with a label that is text, and then there is another label that is flipped and the content of the variable that will receive back from the server. And that input element as what happens when change, when that input element change, when you type something, Okay, we have the on change with end of change that is this one and we change the text. Actually we call set text. And then we have the use effect. What does the use effect do? Because if we change the text, the text will never be flipped. Right, because here is just so if we set the text as a, an, a state that just is the target value, so it's the current text. So if you write a word in the set text in the text state, we will have a word, not flipped, not mirrored, just a word. So how can we get the flipped text through use effect, and in particular use effect? What does use effect does? Call a fetch with the text and get the response and set the flipped state in the React application. And when this is called, when this use effect is triggered. At the first rendering, because there is the square parentheses, even empty or not and every time the text state change in this case. So, now, what happens now if the server is low? Like it get 10 seconds to provide the text for whatever reason the server can have. What happens in practice here? If you type a word and Nothing happens until until these 10 seconds, let's say, are elapsed. This is good or not, that nothing happens on the user interface. So you type, imagine to, be in, to use a website. You type something in a website and nothing happens for 10 seconds. What do you think? in that moment. You're going to reload the page. You're, something is broken or something is not working, but actually it is, it's just as low. In this case, we know, in this fictional example, that it's just the server that is low in processing the response, right? Uh, here, there is no reason to be slow, but imagine that this is not just accessing to a library that flip the text, but will be accesses to another service or computing a very complex query and sometimes may, may need maybe not 10 seconds, maybe less, but still a time, enough time for a person to say it's not working. So how can we minimize this problem? Not solve, because the server is actually 10 seconds slow in this example, and we, we cannot change that. How can we communicate, in a way, this slowness? Or better, how can we communicate to the person using the website that is not broken, that everything is working, is just slow, and this person has to wait for seeing the result? Which is, what, what could be one way to do that? a progress bar. Exactly, you can show progress bar, well, depends how much time, for 10 seconds probably, yes, a progress bar could be fine. For one second, two seconds, probably a progress bar is too much. Uh, not probably, surely a progress bar is too much. Uh, but we can show something on screen that is loading, waiting for. And how do we do this in, in React? this loading or waiting thing, what can be in React? 
everything that you already know, nothing new. Not a compo well, a components to render the, the text or the progress bar or whatever for sure, but where this information is memorized. In a props, in a state, in a context. The fact that you are waiting, that you are in a waiting mode or loading mode or, or not. Yes, you can set a state. So here, for instance, there is an example. We are not going to do this in our exam um, uh, example, but here there is an example with the same flip text as before, in which, as he was suggesting, you can set a state, a loading state, a waiting state, that start as true, because you don't know how long it took the server to reply. So by default, you are in waiting mode, in loading mode. And so you set the, the state as true. And then when you receive a response from the server, a valid response from the server, you can say that set waiting is false. And then in this case, in this example, it put the information not in another components, it could be in other components, but just directly where the flip text should appear. So that if there is a text flipped, you see the text, otherwise you see a clock, basically. And do you remember this syntax, right? What does the syntax here does? Yes, display the second part after the logical end uh, as soon the waiting is true. Mm. One, one of the two is false, it doesn't show anything, but since one is text and it's always true, it's the other one that drive the rendering. Okay, this is one way to end those low responses, adding an extra state that is just for, we have mentioned this, the other, the other, the other time also, this is just for presentation. It's not an application state for getting new information. It's mainly for presentation, for communicating to the person that everything is working properly, just have to wait for some change that happens. Hmm? And this lies, lives and dies within the controlling components. Typically it's not something that you pass through other components because it's just that components that need to wait for that specific kind of information. Let me go back here. Uh, okay, this is waiting. Now, you may have the need, not very often, but sometime, rarely, you may have the need to clean up side effects to do something after a set effect is completed. And this something could be, for instance, close a socket or clear a timer that you set up. And so you set up a timer for three seconds in a React and you want to clear the timer maybe before, after, before the timer elapses automatically. And you put these in a use effect because these are side effects, timer, sockets, etc. So use effect as one more function that you can define within a use effect that is called cleanup. The return function cleanup is a function where you can do this closing operation, this cleanup operation for a use effect. So you open a socket, you send something, receive something in the socket, and then you need to close the socket when you don't need that anymore, and you can do this in a cleanup function. So how the cleanup function works? The cleanup function works in this way. You have the use effect triggered. The use effect does its work. Does not call the cleanup function at the first run. So you just have the use effect, like without the cleanup function. 
Then on the next rendering, or one of the subsequent rendering, maybe that component doesn't need to be rendered anymore uh, for a while, so the first time that the component is rendered again, before calling the next time use effect, the cleanup function of the previous use effect is called. Hmm? So you have use effect function, some time waiting. And then the first time you need that use effect again, you have the cleanup and the new use effect call, hmm? and etc. Hmm? So the cleanup function is not called immediately after the use effect, but just immediately before the next execution of the same use effect. Hmm? This is how the cleanup function work. So, just one note. Uh, we, if you have, have a look at this picture, or the picture also there is previously in the slides, uh, you also see other names, like user layout, effects, etc. because the entire life cycle of React is, can be much more complicated, and so there are a few things that you can do uh, outside of use effects, use state, etc. and there are other hooks for this, particularly other things that we are not going to see in the course, also because the course is almost over, and that some of them not really, really widely used in React. But just to let you know that other hooks exist, like these three in the slides, use the layouts effect is fired synchronously every time the DOM change, and not synchronously. Uh, use memo returns a memoized value, so recomputed by a pure parameter when the parameters change, and use callback similarly, but with not available with the callback function. These are specific cases in specific moments that you can, if you want, use in the future and go deep on how they work. Hmm? But these are not something that we are going to use or we need in this moment. Okay, so back to the APIs. We have seen we have seen and we have done something like this. We get information from a server. We have done this with exams. We have seen that in the flipped example. You have done this in the lab. So let's add a little bit of terminology. The application state, but not the presentation state, but the application state is typically when you have APIs on the server retrieved through the APIs. In our case, there will be information stored in a database on a server, and then our client will query the server to get the information that it needs. And React defined two terminologies to handle with this. One is the re hydrating and the other one is dehydrating. re hydrating is when you get the application state from the HTTP APIs. When you perform the get for the exam, the get for the movies, where you get information. And this must happen when the React application mounts because it's the entire application state, or it's the main application state. So you want to get, in our example, all the exams on the page before showing, probably, the entire page as the first thing. So I want to have the table of the exam fill out. And the best place to do this is inside the use effect, as you did, as we did, with the empty square parentheses. Because at mount time, we call the use effect, and we get the information. And this is when we get the application state for the first time to get started. And then every time we need to refresh the state, because something can change on the server, we can change something on the server, or other 
people can change something on the server, that is still read rating because it's always getting new information and changing the application state from an external source that is the HTTP APIs in our case. Um, in which case we or other change, we want to refresh the state, which are the operation that brings to refreshing the state. We have our exam example or your movies also example. When you want to refresh the state by doing some operation on your React application that you already have or we already have. When you select a filter, yes, and other operation that are more, because you know, selecting a filter, we force you to use the filtering on the server as an exercise in the lab. But the filtering could also be done on the client because the source of information is basically the same, the list of things. Uh, but there are other moments in which you want to refresh the data because the data will likely change. So it's not just a different view of the same data, it's just new data. When you add something or you edit something, so post and update, yes. When you add something, you want to change to refresh the state. And when you edit something, you can also change the state. Hmm? Um, why is not enough to change the state in React? I mean, I add a movie or add a, a, an exam in React. I add that as a line in the table. Why I need to refresh the state to get again all the exam, all the films, whatever? Why is it not enough to say, okay, I've added it, I'm done? No, that's not, no, I mean, uh, if you add a movie and then you perform a post on the server, so that piece that is not read rating, you know, you add a movie or add an exam, you perform a post, so it's in the database if everything go well. Why do you need to read rate again? Why do you need to get the list of all the movies, all the exams again in that moment? There could be two reasons to do that. That would be one case. Other clients can edit the same source of truth. You are not entirely solving that because if you add something and you get the list, when you add something, maybe other people add something else one second before you or one second after you, you don't get this new information because it happens not in the same moment as you. But that is a, a way to minimize that. And another reason. Why it's a good idea to get the list of exams after adding an exam on a server? From a React perspective. because it can be that something went go wrong. So the adding is not successful. You receive uh, an error back from the server. But if you already update the table of, with all the exam, you can get the, the error back. And then you need to delete the exam that you already added. But again, think about the person using, the person perspective, the person using the application. The person see the change, and then at a certain point, the change disappear without any clue why this disappear. Hmm? So these are two possible ways, motivation. One, when you add or edit something to be sure that that editing is actually really saved on the server. So that when you refresh the page, you actually have still this information. So you get back the information and to minimize what your colleagues are saying to minimize the change 
that other to get some fresh data sometime so that if other clients update the server you have a newer version of the data this is just minimize and this is rate rating when you get something deed rating is vice versa is when you extract the state from the react application so for instance, is when you add something, you add something, you delete something, you daydrate, you move the application state from React to the server. You want to save this information. Hmm? So React uses this terminology, redrating for getting things inside the application state, daydrating to put things out from the application state in React. Hmm? So redrating is the things that you have done and we have done last week getting information at the beginning especially and with the loading if you want mm, just in case the server is low etc mm, uh, and because the first time the server could be slow in providing the response not in our case we have small application state but imagine if you have one million movies to parse mm, so it will maybe take some time to process all the millions movie that you have. So please wait while I'm loading the, all the results. So you have the application, you have the, your table, your sidebar in the big lab example, and then you see, please wait. You have a, a, a progress bar, you have just a string, you have something that say, uh, you have to wait. Because everything is working well, but you just, just have to wait. And then at a certain time, you have all the information, your millions film, and you can add it in the table and show all of them whatever you prefer. And this is everything that you already have done. Um, we also can read rate for the reasons we mentioned to refresh the state. How we can do that? With use effect. Sometimes with the same use effect that you already have defined. And you can use, for instance, dependency is a fact and as we mentioned two problems may arise one is the one that your colleagues was mentioning and your colleague in the in the front not the one in the bottom of the room that is what we call here the end client problems and the other one is actually infinite loops so to be to be pay attention so the end client problem is what we we discuss uh, a few minutes ago. You can have multiple clients working together with a single API server. This is pretty common. Actually, this is how the web works. You have multiple clients running on the browser querying the server or few servers in some way, in some cases. So you have the browser one, browser two, three, and four, all querying the same information, all editing the same information, potentially at the same time. So you should have a way to refresh your state <coughs> as soon as possible, because if you add something from here, and you don't refresh here in browser three, but you go editing, the same things, sorry, if you add something and you don't refresh here, you don't see the things that was added. But worse, if you edit something here and edit something here, which is the right editing to, to keep, the last one, the first one, it's hard to say, it depends from the intention of the person. Or worst, if you delete something here in browser one, and you want to edit that thing that you deleted, the server probably will give you an error if you edit a deleted item. Because that was, was deleted a few moments ago, so it's not available anymore in the database. So if, if the browser, the browser should be always synchronized one with the other. So if I edit something, the other client should know immediately, in theory, 
that I edited something so that I immediately see the change that was made by another person. Because the source of truth is the API server. It's not the client, it's not the application state. It is the API server that contains the true data. So this is a problem when you manipulate data. This is a problem that we are not going to solve here. We are just using the better than nothing solution, but not the real solution because it's a little bit more complicated. So the better than nothing solution is what we were saying before. When we do some operation, we get the state. So when we load a new page, we get a new state. When we load the table, we get the table from the state. When we add something, we get all the list of added things, not only for preventing uh, wrong things, to notice that wrong things happened, like I cannot add something because I, the server is not replying, because I, I put some wrong information in it, but also forget some of this information. If I'm lucky, I get all of them, otherwise, maybe not. So this is better than nothing, again, just don't forget that. Uh, you can also do periodically, like polling. We are not to do that, but you can polling periodically uh, um, a server. It's possible. It's not really recommended. So don't do that, but it's possible. Hmm? So there are better than nothing solutions. Ways to minimize this problem, not to solve them. Hmm? Uh, the real solution should be uh, just to mention this to you, just that you, you know that these are just uh, small fixes, <coughs> temporary fixes for amendment to minimize the problem, not their solution. The solution is that it's the server that should communicate the change to the clients whenever it has some data changed. So it's not HTTP, right? Because HTTP we have the clients sending a request to a server, and the server responding to that specific request. We don't have the server starting the communication in HTTP. Never. The server cannot send something to any client, whatever it wants. It needs to receive a request before. So the real solution should be that the server communicate the change as soon as they appear in the server, independently who, from where these changes are. This is repeating out of scope for this course, but if you are curious, the mechanism that you that typically are used in practice are among the main is these two, web sockets and uh, mechanism of publishing subscriber. Hmm? So WebSocket is a nutshell, is a socket, but for the web, hmm? using web technology. It defines a new protocol that is called, that is identified with WS instead of HTTP, WS, colon, slash, slash, an address, and it's a socket. It's a channel which you can send whatever you want and receive whatever response you want in a peer-to-peer -peer flavor. So it's not a request or response, it's bilateral communication, in which you put the client and the server at the same level as peers. And the other one is a publisher subscriber mechanism, not very different from that. The idea is that you have something that are publishing information and other things that are the subscriber to this information. So they get automatically notified when something change. So I am the publisher of new information. I get new data, I get a new exam, and so I publish this information publicly and everybody that is listening to me will get this information and can decide what to do with this information. It's subscribed to my, my, me publishing information. And under the hood, typically, pub, pub sub mechanism use WebSocket. Not always, but often. So these are just two, two ways. This is the solution having the server communicate back to the client. Again, out of scope, we will be happy to get the information when we perform some operation. Also solving the problem of, non, of uh, wrong request. 
in this way. Uh, is, this, is this clear? Enough. So the other one other thing that may happen with use effects is infinite loops. Um, infinite loops may happen especially when use effect is used in together with use state. Not always, but typically. And infinite loop can be both in the rendering, so React starts rendering itself the components infinite time, and you don't see anything in the page until you see an error from React saying this was an infinite loop, I'm stuck here. Uh, or in external calls, in which you continue to trigger to call uh, an API forever. And you continue to get the same information forever. And this happened in two significant cases. The first one is trivial, but um, it's something to pay attention. You have a dependency array, you should have a dependency array, but you don't. So the dependency array is missing, but you should have a dependency array in the use effect. So you are not calling the APIs, let's say, in only when needed, but more time than needed. And the other one is when one of the items in the dependency array is an object or an array. So right now, we didn't have anything in the dependency array, or you just have in the example. If you look at this example here, here we have text in the dependency array. Text was a string, not an object, not an array. A string, a number, a boolean, everything works well without problem. Particular cases start when you have objects as, or arrays as the type of use effect. Um, so missing dependency is easy. Hmm? Easy. Not easy. Easy to spot. What is wrong here? It's clearly that you need a dependency array that binds that set count to a specific change in the value of set count. And not every time, every, every, and not always. So not calling set count C, C plus one always, but you want to call it only when the value change, and the value in this case is a string. So set up dependency correctly. Remember which everything does, so square parentheses, no dependency inside, elements in the dependency array, no array at all, and use it when it's needed. And if you need a summary to bring with you, let me go back one more time. It's here, there is a summary. Empty square parentheses when the components mount. No array, no parameter, no arguments. Every render of the components, that is easy to trigger an infinite loop uh, with specific dependency. So every time when the components mount plus when one of these dependencies change. So this is just a summary. Let me go back where we are. So pay attention on what you put in the dependency array. Objects. What is wrong here? Look at this code. We have an input text as before uh, that as, a, as value secret dot value, so an object in the state, in secret, here in the state, we have an object. It has two values, value as a string and count secret as a number. And we have an input that show this value, the string, the empty string at the beginning, and when it's called onChange, we set a new secret 
it's an input text. When we type something, we update the secret state and we change the, um, the value here. We change the value. And we keep the rest. And when the value, we have a user fact that every time secret is updated, so when we type something in the input, we, if the value is secret, is equal to the string secret, we also update this number here. So if you type hello, in the value we'll got probably hello, and then in that moment, the use effect is triggered and check that hello is equal to secret and since it's not equal, nothing happens. Otherwise, if the string that we type is secret, we also change the number. And so we get count secret, one, two, three, etc. So logically, everything works, right? But there is something that is not working. If you copy and paste this in a React application, this is not working as expected. This is working too much. Because secret is an object, or secret is an array. In this case, it's an object, but for array, it's the same thing. Uh, the problem is that with object and arrays, uh, use effect and React and JavaScript is not able to understand whether the element change or not. So if you remember, we said that when you have a dependency in a use effect, that is triggered when the content of the dependency change. So if you have a string text and you change it in text, that use effect is not triggered anymore because it's always text. So use effect is able to understand not only when, when it's changed the variable, but when the content of the variable change. This doesn't work with objects and arrays. Because when you call set something as a state, you create a new object every single time. You, when you add something to an array, you create or you return a new array in a way. So JavaScript is not able anymore to check if the content is or better. It checks the contents and say, is the content of the object the same as before? And the answer is always no. It's, it's different. So putting an object or an array, an entire array or an entire object as a dependency, like we did before, the secret, will trigger that use effect every single time you change that object, whatever change you do to the object. Because the object is always a new object in this check. It's never the same as before. It's never equal to the previous version. And this applies not to string, not to boolean, not to number, but just to array and strings. So in this case, how we can solve it? Well, the easy way and the best way actually is not use objects, entire objects, entire arrays as dependency, by identify what you want to really track in a dependency. So in our case, in the case of this example, what we want to really track is not the entire object changing, is the value changing, the text within the object. So if you type secret.value, is enough. Is enough because value is a string, is not an object. So we don't have this problem because a string, because React and JavaScript is able to identify that a string is actually different from the previous one or not. Hmm? So don't use objects because object, when React performs this change or arrays, when React performs this change are always different from the previous version of that. And this will generate multiple call to this use effect. Hmm? Because in the previous case, inside use effect, where you change the input value to secret, set secret is called, 
set secret is already is written here set secret this one increments the counter and creates a new object so secret is a new object the dependence is triggered the value is still secret so it's created a new object incrementing the counter and secret is a new object and again and again and again this continues forever it never stops so it's an infinite loop because again again is again react is not able to perform this comparison of content with objects and array mm. here there is another example same thing um, with arrays uh, you can either not use dependency or add some check within or add an additional state to trigger additional text boolean number kind of state for triggering use effect or binding to specific item in an array so the first item in the array always the first item in the array or the length of the array Typically, one possibility is the length. If you change the array, you typically change also the length. You add or remove elements, so the length of the array change. So same things, to avoid infinite loop, don't use that things. For um, arrays and object. So, date rating during updates. These are the two cases for infinite loop. No dependency, wrong dependency, typically no dependency, or wrong elements in a dependency, <coughs> object and array. So let's go back to the previous case, the rating during, during an update. Uh, what this excerpt does? So we have an input element, and we have a button that say add. And when it's clicked, we call the add item function that set an, an element in a list, add something in a list, and call a fetch. Is this good? Call a post, actually, to that element. Is this good? Something wrong here. We have a text, a button, clicking on the button, we add the element in the array, and we perform a post to some APIs with the content that this API provides. Yes, we don't do the things that we, we mentioned before. We don't retrieve back the list. So this is what we, we call, with what's called optimistic state updates. You assume that the remote state, the API state, what was we, we were mentioning before, everything will go, will, will go well. We add something and the server will accept our request without any problem. We add something, same thing. We delete something, everything, every, uh, the same. Without any problem, it doesn't mean that we do a wrong request. That could mean that another client delete the element that we are trying to edit. So in that case, something go wrong, not for our fault, but something will go wrong in any case. So this is called optimistic state update. We update the state, and we perform the add. But the state in the React application is updated here. So since this is a a change of state, if there is a table, a list connected to that state that will be rendered, the components will be rendered because it's a change of state. What is wrong here? We don't have here the optimistic state update. What's, what's the problem here? 
the same code as before. We just check if the response is okay. So if everything go well in server, and then at that point, we update the list and the component will be re-rendered. Still not there. <coughs> what is wrong here? What is missing here? What's the problem, let's say, here? Go. Yes, if there is any error, the user cannot see anything because it just skip this uh, response dot okay, but we, we can imagine to add here else. And show the error. So it's missing, but it could be reasonable. It's something that so show the error. Okay. You got it. Otherwise, we stay here one hour. <laughs> show the error. That's something that is missing, but now it is present. Another thing. Yes, we can also get, uh, we should also get, we already said before, we should also get the entire list, the entire update. One more thing. We encountered something similar before. What happens if the response <laughs> is slow? If the server took 10 seconds to reply, what happens to the application? It looks like frozen. Nothing happens. So you fill out a form, you press add, the form closes, and you see nothing. You see the table as it was before, and you can think, well, it's wrong. I, I didn't add it, so let's re-add it again and you perform another request. And then testing later, and five requests later, you will get the first request, or the first response as okay, and five, four errors, because you are re-adding the same thing again, again, again. So, the problem here, all the issues that you raise are correct. The problem here is also that the user will not see the added item for a while until the server reply. So we have the opposite problem as before. Before we just add the element and we don't know, we show immediately the element. And then we hope that everything go well. Here we are pessimistic. We are trying to be sure that everything go well before showing the thing to the person. So until we receive a response, we don't show anything. And we, here, we cannot solve it with a loading state. Uh, it's also bad to show it is a loading state. You maybe want to have the user doing other operation on the other elements while blocking the entire application for just one add or one delete or one edit. What you can do is to do both. Oh, let me see if it's here. So basically, this set list should stay here at the beginning, like in the optimistic step updates. And here in the response.ok, here you should have the get. as he was mentioning. So you're trying to do both. You optimistically, you notify that the adding operation was, uh, this is the result. 
that the adding operation is complete on the React side, but you confirm the results only after the server reply back. This is more about uh, communicating information to the person using the website than not clearly a technical issue because it's not just moving lines around. So what you want to do is update the state in parallel to the fetch request, to the post request, so that the person know that the operation is complete, that the add request, that the add form was filled correctly, that there is no problem on its own side. The tricky part here is that that change, that update, that adding, that delete, should be marked as temporary. So it could be a different background color, it could be a label, it could be other things. Let's say, look, that change is still not saved on the server. It's still temporary, can change, can be reverted, but the operation is complete on your perspective. And then at a the, certain point, the server will reply to the request, to the post request. You will perform a get, you will reiterate again, so we'll, you will refresh the application state after the post. And in that moment, refreshing the table, refreshing the components will remove the marking element, the temporary element, and will replace it with hopefully the correct one or with nothing. If the operation didn't, well, didn't go well, and you can also show the errors in that moment. So you can hmm, try to do both, inform in an optimistic way and get back the information when it's time to get back the information. So for instance, in our exam list, it's a table, we can, when we add already something, we can change the color of the background. Hmm? And maybe when we add something, we can hide the edit, delete icons so that we cannot edit something that is not saved on the server. But that communicates that the results of the operation on the web application is complete, just not saved in a way. You can write saving near to the element like Google Docs does. It writes saving. So all of this is clearly visible when the server is slow, slower than in our cases. If we do this in our case, we probably will not see any colors because we are running the client and the server on the same computer and it's pretty fast. But if we just slow down things a little bit, then we maybe see a different color for the temporary item for one second and then we will immediately see the right results. So this is clearly something that you have to pay attention in distributed system, maybe big system, complex system, not something to keep in mind, something to do, but you will not see immediately a results if you try your computer because you are faster and the server is relatively small in our case. But that is a good way to do, informing and refreshing information. So before having a break and doing the exercise, let me spend five minutes speaking about uh, what's called the rules of hooks. Uh, then we will put in practice uh, all of these in our example and then we will speak about also some rules of the exam. We will refresh rules of the exam. Uh, so rules of hooks. Uh, we can and we will write something like this, right? We have three use state with three different names, with the three different um, content. One is a string, one is a, bar, one is a boolean, one is a number. And we call set item, set count, set mode. Nothing strange, but why 
things work in this way, how they work. How can values be persisted across function call? So these are behind the hood of hooks, all hooks, not just state, also the other hooks, works in a very similar way. So when you use a hook, React associated to each functional component in which the hook is present, an array of slots, an array of hooks, where each, each hook has an, a slot in an array. And these slots are stored with the function, so with the component function. So they are persistent across different calls. And each time you call a hook, a new slot in this array is used. The first time is created, the slot, the other time is reused or read or updated that slot. So each hook will have in this array a space for itself. Either a new space if it's first time it's called or reusing the same space. And this array is stored in the um, in the in the function. So as a corollary of this, you have an array. Array are ordered. So the first you state use the first hook, the first slot. The second you will use the second slot, etc. React to know which hooks, uh, which hooks, which function. Uh, React must know which function my host hooks, and hooks must always be called in the same order each time as a component to render. So if you call set hidden, set count, set mode, at every component rendered, you have to call it in the same order because it's just position based in a way. You don't write code in a position based, but under the hood is position based. This is happening normally if you don't do something strange because you just have a component and you call the hooks in the same way, but maybe you want to add a cycle or an if that prevent the execution of these hooks and then in that case things can go wrong and you can maybe set the count inside the hidden if you don't call hidden before the count in some execution in the second or third execution of the of the hook so hooks must be in every rendered executed in the same order as the creation uh, so as a suggestion Hooks uh, is always better to call hooks at the top level in direct function, as we did for use state, mm -hmm. always at the top, uh, or in use effect, mm -hmm. or in handler, but not inside loops, condition, nested function, etc. It can cause problem of ordering, it can change the ordering with respect to the first run. And that should be obvious, but only call hooks from React function. Hooks are JavaScript code. So you can define a regular JavaScript function if you want. Why not? But don't do that. Don't call it from JavaScript function, from React function component. Uh, call it from React function component, as, you, as you, we already does. And you can also call hooks from other hooks, like we did in use effect. Because this is all within the logic of React. So this is something that typically doesn't happen, because typically you define things, you don't use cycle, loops, condition too much in a React project. But if the project becomes too big, Pay attention that hooks must be always called in the same way at the every render of the function. Whatever hooks. State is particularly critical because you define multiple state typically and you read and set them at different moments in the application. Uh, use effect is less because critical because you typically define one or two of them at the beginning of the components and then not a lot of other time, but this applies to all hooks. With state is very, very, it's more common to have multiple call 
of, of, uh, of the use state hook. Okay, question? Okay, so we can have 15 minutes of break and then we can go, we can do the, an exercise to put this in practice and speak a little bit about the example.